And what's going on, my ASVAB party people? Hopefully you're having a great day. My name's Coach Anderson, and let's get to work. In this problem, we are looking at two concepts blended together. And before I tell you what those concepts are, pause the video, give it a shot yourself, because I want you to feel what it's like to give your best and then make your best a little bit better with me walking you through. So again, pause that video, give it a shot, and then comment if this video helps you out and comment your answer as well. Let's give it a shot here. So solve for X in the equation right there. So this is gonna be blending two different concepts. This is going to be blending polynomial factoring. So let me write that down. Polynomial factoring as well as solving equations right there. So my party people, if you're in my program, you're gonna be finding both of these topics in our math knowledge course. Polynomial factoring will be math knowledge unit number seven. And then solving equations will be math knowledge unit number three. So that's where you'll find each of those concepts individually. And in this problem, again, we're blending them together to get this done. So again, if you're in my program, that's where you'll find it. Click the link in my description, the bio, wherever we are, click that link to join the full program and get the score you want. So here we go. X squared minus 5X plus 6. So when we're solving an equation like this, let me write this out. We have a trinomial. And what a trinomial is, is exactly this part right here, where I think you've learned how to factor. And if you haven't, no worries, I'll walk you through. But to factor a trinomial, you may have heard me say, find the factors of C that add up to B. And that's the main way that we're going to get this done. So let me just walk you through step number one in terms of the factoring and how we're actually going to solve this equation after we're done factoring. So let's write out the number for C, which is 6. What are the factors of 6? Well, we can do 1 times 6. We can do 2 times 3. Those are the two ways that we can get 6. Now, once you find the factors of C, that's step one, step two is going to be which of these pairs, which of these factor pairs adds up to B, and B, with the sign included, is negative five. Okay, so which of these adds up to negative five? Well, that's a little confusing sometimes, right? Because one plus six is seven, two plus three is positive five, not negative five. So what gives? How do we actually adapt to that, right? That can, that's a very, very appropriate question to ask. But what we're going to do to get this done is remembering, hey, what if these were both negative? What if the 2 and the 3 were both negative? Negative times a negative, that's still going to be a positive. And then negative 2 plus negative 3 does indeed give us negative 5. So this actually works. Yes, absolutely. We can go ahead and factor this now to x minus 2 and x minus 3. That's what this can turn into. But this is where the challenge comes in, my party people, because the answer is not A. The answer is not A. I know we might be thinking, oh, negative 2 and negative 3, that's the answer. No, we're asking what x equals x equals negative 2? No, 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 no. The factor pair was negative 2 and negative 3. To solve this now, this is where we understand the following. The right side here is 0. And we are multiplying this times this. So how do we get 0? By multiplying? By multiplying by 0, right? Anything times 0 is 0. So the idea that we're going to be leveraging, the idea that we're going to be utilizing is this. Hey, if x minus 2 was equal to 0, then again, 0 times whatever gives you 0. That's a good, that's a good thing. And then if this was 0 here, well, again, 0 times whatever is going to give you 0. So we want to figure out what makes this 0 so that when we multiply, we get 0. Same thing over here. What can this x be so that when we multiply, we get zero? That's what it's all about. And if at this point you're a little confused and you want to really break down these topics, don't forget that tonight, if you're watching this the day it came out, we're actually hosting a math knowledge practice test review. So we'll be going over similar questions to this 
and it's going to be about 16 questions all the way through. So it's going to be a great session. I really recommend you join. The link is in my bio, or you can go ahead and text me to figure out how to join. I got you. So let's go ahead and finish up the problem here. We have x minus 2 equals 0 right over here. To solve that, I'm just going to add 2 to both sides. We have x equals positive 2. Over here, same deal. Let's try it out. We have x minus 3 equals 0. Okay, what do we do here? We'll add 3 to both sides, and that's going to give us x equals 3. And those are our answers, everybody. It's not going to be negative 2 and negative 3. It's going to be positive 2 and positive 3. Those are the correct answers, and that's why it's actually going to be C and not A. So again, my party people, it's a challenge question for a reason, blending topics together, and you need to be prepared to answer questions like this if you expect to score high so you can go for that job that you want. As always, my party people, my name is Coach Anderson. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to comment, like this video, and follow the channel for more. That way, we can keep helping more people just like you. And again, we have free ASVAB classes for those of you who want to learn for free. And on top of that, we have our full program for those of you that want everything lined up for you so you can just sit down, get to work, and not worry about anything else. Either way, I've got your back every step of the way. Let's ace the ASVAB and continue getting one day better, one day at a time. I'll see you in the next one, everybody. Cheers.